Our exhibit is all about the benefits of exercise uh, and the role of exercise in uh, longevity of life. The benefits of exercise on the cardiovascular system are well established. We know that exercise has um, a positive influence on the blood pressure, on the lipid profile and insulin sensitivity and together these factors reduce the risk of atherosclerosis in exercising individuals. Indeed, people who exercise regularly live about seven years longer than those that don't, that, that don't exercise. Unfortunately, very occasionally, young athletes harboring sinister cardiac disorders may die suddenly without warning. Such deaths are, of course, highly emotional and tragic events. They're publicized by the media that draw attention to the youth of the individual, the counterintuitive nature of the event, and the potential number of life years lost. The vast majority are due to hereditary or congenital abnormalities of the heart, including the cardiomyopathies, such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, as well as ion channel diseases, including long QT syndrome and Brugada syndrome. There is data from Italy that suggests that early identification of these conditions can prevent sudden death. Indeed, the screening program from Italy has shown that death rates have been reduced from 3.6 per 100,000 down to 0.4 per 100,000 over a 25-year period, representing a 90% reduction in sudden death. The issue, of course, when we screen is that there is this worry or concern about generating false positive results, and that's because people who exercise regularly have to have an increase in heart size to generate 25 litres of cardiac output per minute. This increase in heart size has an impact on the ECG and the echocardiogram, and sometimes the physiological features of the athlete's heart may overlap with those of disease. At Cardiac Risk in the Young, we've spent the last 15 or 16 years researching methods whereby we can actually differentiate disease from physiology, so where we can differentiate the ugly heart from the big, beautiful heart. And we've been doing this with ECG and echocardiograms. The ECG is a simple electrical tracing that takes about two minutes to perform. It's non-invasive, and that gives us an idea of the conduction uh, tissue of the heart and excludes conditions such as the long QT syndrome, the Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, and Brugada syndrome. And the echocardiogram is very useful in diagnosing conditions like dilated cardiomyopathy and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. At this exhibit, we will be raising awareness of the benefits of exercise, but also of diseases that may be implicated in sudden cardiac death so that individuals are aware of warning symptoms, the fact that these are familial, so that if there's a sudden death in their first degree relative under the age of 50, these people may be tested, but also to demonstrate how our technology is useful at differentiating physiology from pathology. Well, screening does identify conditions. In our experience at Cardiac Risk in the Young, we pick up a serious condition in one in every 300 athletes that we will what, that we'll have screened. Of course, these conditions that we identify have been implicated in sudden cardiac death, and therefore we do adopt a rather conservative and homogeneous approach when we give guidance and advice in that we would normally recommend that athletes harboring things like the cardiomyopathies and ion channel diseases do not participate in exercises of medium to high intensity. Now, of course, there is a risk that uh, we may dissuade people who would have never died, uh, even if they'd played sport for 20 or 30 years. The aim really is to encompass anyone that's at high risk to minimize the risk of such awful catastrophes. Our work at CRY has involved assessing a very high level athletes. These are individuals that may be competing in the London 2012 Olympics for Great Britain. We also assess uh, athletes in the Rugby Union, in Lawn Tennis Association and the Football Association. So we're used to um, testing very high level athletes. We know that in this group, one in 300 has a serious problem that could cause sudden death, but one in 100 has a relatively minor problem, structural problem, that may not cause a problem immediately or even result in a short athletic career, but could pr cause problems later on. Indeed, the identification of some of these people allows more aggressive or diligent surveillance so that we can intervene early before symptoms of heart failure um, 
basically become manifest.